Okay, in the last episode, I said that in this episode, I was going to be talking about uh, the difference between giving and taking. I'm not going to cover that in this episode because I think you guys kind of get the idea that you have to be a giver in this business. You have to give before you take, and that doesn't mean just with our customers and clients, but also with our peers as well. On this episode, instead, I thought it'd be fun to share with you just a few stories about people that we have helped in the probate process. So the big question is this, how are ordinary agents just like us supposed to stand out in the overly crowded real estate space while living a great lifestyle without having to go broke or radically change what we're already doing? Probate is the answer, and this series will show you how. I'm Anthony Nitz, and welcome to The Probate Agent. Okay, so one of my favorite stories of helping people in this probate process is when I was referred by one of my vendors, a locksmith, that I had probably sent 20 people to over the course of a year, uh, who needed their locks changed and whatnot. And granted, it, it was only a few hundred bucks here and there, but you know, but he really appreciated it. And it garnered that reciprocity element that is so valuable to us, right? We give, we give, we give to them. He ended up referring me to this person. Uh, and what it was was mom had passed away. Uh, dad had passed away some time prior, but mom had passed away this property was unfortunately in a probate and they said uh you know okay you know you need to call anthony so we we had a conversation we met i gave her my little uh you know dog and pony show not too extensive i have kind of a a quick short version of it that i do but i went over it with her and i had my comparables in my uh binder and I asked her first, I said, well, let me ask you a question. What do you think the house is worth? I already have my notes. What do you think it's worth? She told me that she had already met three other agents. Okay. Wow. So first of all, what are the odds that I'm still sitting there? Because if she met with three other agents, uh, why didn't she list with them? Well, probably because they weren't providing her with a lot of value. So what I did was, uh, or, or what what she told me was that based on what they had said is that she would be lucky if she got four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars for this house and when i looked at my comps and this is guys this is the difference between having you know somebody who's out of the area who doesn't really know the area because she told me one guy came like from you know 45 miles away or something like that to do the listing appointment but based on me being local to the area, right? Because I try to market in my fairly general local area uh, that I know pretty well. They told her that her house was worth 435. When I looked at my comps, I thought, mm, you know, it's going to be more like 470. You know, more like 470. When I told her that, she just laughed, and she actually called me out on it. She said. Uh, are you just telling me that so that you'll get the listing? Because if that's the case, I don't play like that. And I said, no, 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 no. Let me show you the comparables. Well, of course, the comparables that I showed her, nobody else had. Nobody else showed her. They were pulling up properties that were totally irrelevant to what it is that she had to offer in that area. And there was a little uh, unique situation going on in that area with neighbor there was adjacent neighborhoods that had much larger homes so even if you try to do a comparable to that which believe it or not some of them were using those uh, you got a lower cost per square foot than you would for the size of home that her mom had well anyways so i told him it was about 470 and then i told him about how i do my open houses and i get a lot of people there and i get investors who bid against each other and whatnot and she, you know, they said, okay, fine. And it, the only reason that she was fine with it was because she was referred, or I was referred to her by this locksmith, somebody that she knew. So we did the open house. We had somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 and 
235 people come to the open house, I think, something like that, a uh, large number. We had people literally fighting over this house. And that included investors. And she came over and, uh, our, our, I mean, at the end of the day, we ended up selling the house that she was told by three other agents that she'll be lucky if she gets $435,000. We sold her for $510,000 to a cash buyer closed escrow in 14 days. You know, that just goes to show you when you're a professional in this business, you can really do a good job. But there's so many of us out there that are, um, and you know, you might be one of these people that you just, you're, you're, you're dying to get that next deal. And so you end up cutting somebody short, you know, don't do that. Don't cut, don't cut people short. Give them the value that they deserve, whether it's you providing uh, services to them or you just doing a darn good job, okay? Well, the end result of that particular sale was, of course, they were beyond happy. They were thrilled. You know, 435000 versus $510,000, right? What's that, $65,000 yeah, 65, difference? Uh, so they were very happy with that, to say the least. And as a result, uh, they had me, uh, the husband, her, his parents had passed away also. Not, I mean, like right about the same time almost. And so they had me list uh, his parents' house. It was in a trust. You know, they gave me that listing. So what it worked out to be was about $48,000 in commissions between the two sales. You can't beat that. And as a result, they have probably referred me, you know, five or six other listings, just to just regular listings to people in the local area, uh, just for doing a good job for them. You know, so I love that story. I love telling that story because when you do a good job, when you put, when you create value for yourself by offering services, because that's one of the things that I did. I said, hey, you know what? I'll come out. I'll take photos for you. I'll take uh, I do the the, the in-depth market analysis, not just a computer run, click a button, and off you go. No, I'm going to do an in-depth market analysis for you, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, give you all my vendors, which they use several of them, you know, to 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 get work done. The locksmith was one of them because they had already known him. So we did that. Another one, another great story, another fun story that I had was. I got a call from a uh, gentleman who, uh, well, let's say, let's put it this way. Uh, he was very prominent in Sports Illustrated. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Uh, his mom had a little condo in, uh, in our city. And, you know, I worked in that area pretty frequently, but I found out that, you know, she passed away and the, the property was in fact in probate. Well, he called me and he said, Anthony, you know what? We need to get this house sold or this condo sold and just get it off, you know, the table. He was dealing with some medical issues that he uh, did not have the energy and the stamina and the endurance to, to withstand it at that time. And so I said, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. Well, in the end of the day, same thing. We did the same thing where we just get a lot of people interested at, at one point in time, have one open house, have as many people show up as possible to fight over this thing. And they came uh, in in droves. Uh, we sold the house. We sold it in one day, or the condo, I'm sorry, in one day. And when that was done, he ended up referring us to a few other very prominent uh, people in the sports industry here locally in Southern California. And uh, obviously not saying their names for privacy, but it was really, really a neat thing because it's so funny how you look at these people as big superstars and, you know, how important they are. And, you know, it's sometimes they're just so humble and so nice and kind and giving and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and just makes you feel good. And then when they refer you to other people, because now you're their trusted advisor, 
boy, how, how can you go wrong with that? And it was a, really a simple process too. The, <clears throat> when we have all those bids and we go into court and we have to, uh, you know, present it in front of the, uh, the probate judge and the referee, uh, we say, Hey, this is the offers that we got. And we are, you know, interested in accepting this one in California, they do an overbid process. Fortunately, we didn't have any overbids on that one at that day. But we actually got, you know, considerably higher than what the probate referee had actually fa uh, figured that we should get on that particular property. Another one that we did was kind of cool. Now, this one's a trust. And the, the way that we got this was through some postings on Facebook. Uh, a friend of a friend saw somebody or saw our postings and knew that, you know, we specialized in probate. Well, mom was in a trust. And it's so funny because the call that I got from these people was, well, we've got to sell mom's house. She has to move into a assisted living facility and we understand you specialize in probate. And so we have to do, you know, we have to do the probate. And I'm like, the probate, what, uh, do you do you have uh, a trust? And she said, yeah, we here's the trust right here. So can you take care of it for us? Well, this wasn't a probate. It was a trust. You know, I ultimately explained it to him. I said, there's a difference between probate. And you guys are lucky you have a trust because <clears throat> if you don't have a trust, you are going to spend a lot of money in probate fees. And we listed the house, do this thing. Like I said, I do this thing where I, uh, I'll put it out in the MLS, but I'll hold it only available for one day in an open house where everybody comes. Well, Prior to that, what I do is I take, <clears throat> excuse me, I call all the investors in my list. I call every single one of them. I say, hey, new listing, uh, open house is on Saturday. You have, you know, Wednesday, we're going to do, you know, you can come by and look at it so you can get your bids in first. And I do this for a very specific purpose. I do this because, number one, I want to see what the investor pool is saying that they're willing to bid <clears throat> excuse me and when i do this and to see what they said every investor that came over there was bidding between 510 and 530 for this particular house now this house is in a you know eight to nine hundred thousand dollar neighborhood but it had not been upgraded or updated or anything since about 1980 okay the the, the concrete in the pool was cracking. The walls were cracked. Um, There's weird wiring and cabling all over the place. So it was it was definitely one of those that needed to be a, a full rehab. Well, as a result of this open house of these investors coming by, like I said, we had about uh, seven investors who actually submit uh, an offer on the property between the five ten and five thirty price range. Well, we did our open house on Saturday and it was really interesting because we had a huge turnout again, like we always do. These people come, they bid on this property. They say, hey, you know what? We're willing to pay this much money for this house. And ultimately we ended up selling this house for $710,000, $710,000 as opposed to $500,000 in 10 to five hundred thirty thousand dollars so that was a great thing but here's the kicker the person who ended up buying it for seven hundred and ten thousand dollars was one of the investors who bid five hundred and thirty thousand dollars so i tell this story because it's so important to understand when we're having conversations with people who are dealing with probate they're like well why don't i just call the people who say the will buy ugly houses sign or why don't we just do the we'll buy, we'll, buy, we'll buy your house for cash sign? Well, the reason is because they're going to try and get it at 50, 60, 70% of the value of the property. Because even in that neighborhood, like I said, that's a you know mid eight to, to $900,000 price range in that area. At $710,000, they were still getting a good deal. Okay, even with the rehab that they had to do. So this is part of the value that we create for our for our customers helping them understand 
that there's these, you know, situations that they need to be aware of. And it was funny because one of the daughters called me up and she's like, I can't believe you charged a full 6%, you know, and she was furious because, well, I, I double ended it, you know, in California, we can do that. So I double ended it and she was furious. Uh, if I would have known you were charging that much, then, you know, we would have never listed it. And I said, oh, well, what would, would you have done? Would you have just taken one of the, sold it to somebody for cash? Yeah, we would have sold it to somebody for cash. Okay, so for the, you know, 6% that I made, you know, the the, the $42,000, you would have gave away, you know, $200,000. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And then she kind of got it. She's like, oh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> you know, there's always somebody in there who's never happy. Speaking of, there's one, one case where I had... um. Um, lady passed away, you know, family got involved. I was referred by one of the attorneys that I work with, went out there, listed the property, the PR, the guy who was in charge, who lived locally, you know, he seemed to be on top of everything and handling everything. Well, of his family members, he was probably one of the more meek <laughs> of them because one of the family members was an attorney from, I want to say it was like New Hampshire or something like that. He lived in New Hampshire. It was his brother, lived in New Hampshire. And suddenly this attorney in New Hampshire knows everything about Southern California real estate. And he was on the phone with me every four or five days. And he made sure to let me know that uh, he knew that the only reason that I was, um, you know, selling this property was because just so I can rip them off and get commissions and, and this and that. And, you know, what I had to do was I just had to realize that number one, they're dealing with a stressful situation. They've got mom or dad, whoever passed away, you know, nobody likes to see their family member, go family members gone. But also one of the other things that's really interesting is I see a lot of people, they get into these fights about the money. I mean, the minute mom or dad passes away, they're already talking about money. I can tell you from my own experience, when uh, someone close to us passed away and we were the, uh, the heirs, the other heirs, I mean, immediately before this person was even uh, uh, buried or cremated, <laughs> was asking to come dig around in their in their. Uh, coin collection and their in their drawers and things like that to see if they could find any you know hidden stuff you know and how quick can we get the money out of the bank account and this and that and it's like oh my gosh you gotta be kidding me but anyways uh so this guy attorney uh, like i said new hampshire i think you know on the phone with me every single day and very very uh difficult to deal with but, you know, I just maintain my, my cool and I maintain my conviction that I am doing the best job that anybody is going to do for them. Because it's when you start to let people get to you and you waver, oh, then they, they get you. And now you're in trouble. Okay, now you're going to lose out on any opportunity that you have because they can smell the fear on you, right? Uh, they're going to end up firing you. You're going to you're going to concede and and cancel the listing agreement, uh, whatever. And by which, by the way, on probates, I never uh, put an easy exit guarantee in there. You know, that's one of the things that I don't do on probates. I do it on other listings, but I don't do it on probates for this very reason, because family members, they suddenly become experts out of the area and they want to take it all away from you. So that was a very uh, interesting uh, case in the end we still got them the top dollar which they weren't still weren't satisfied with but based on the on the market conditions at the time oh we were you know way ahead of the curve for them uh, and you know it is what it is so anyways you know I just wanted to share you with you a couple little stories about you know some probate sales that we had done in the past because I you know me personally I love I just love doing them uh, because a couple couple reasons. Number one, if you work hard on them, you know, 
people want the sale and they want the money out of the sale. So they're not going to give you as hard of a time in most cases about the negotiations, you know, over a couple of thousand dollars. How many times have you worked with a seller who, you know, blew an amazing offer because, you know, well, I just want a couple thousand dollars more. You know, if they're offering that price, they must want, they must be willing to go higher. <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, you don't get it. Yeah, we just uh, uh, um, love working with <laughs> with them like that. And then, and then there there are so there's those ones that come along too, guys. You, that they are crystal clear. Sell the house today. Don't let it sit. Don't put it on the market. I don't care about getting top dollar on it. Sell it today. Well, then you call your investor buddies. You say, guys, come make your best offer right now. And you sell the house. And now you're paid in, you know, two weeks. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that as long as the owner of the property realizes that. So anyways, I'd love to hear your stories. If you have worked with probates or trust sales or even just any unique um unique little situations that you have. Love to hear those. Uh, go ahead and visit theprobateagent.com and submit them there. And uh, maybe we'll feature that on the show at some point in time. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe right here where you're listening to us right now and any of your other social media platforms. And leave feedback for me. It's really important to me and it helps us out. Do you have a question that you want answered live on the show? Go to theprobateagent.com to submit your question or even to get an opportunity to be interviewed. For my agent friends, you'll also find additional content and some freebies there that you can download right now. Until next time, let's put the pro back into probate.